I was reading crime writers and loving what they did. Uh, at the time, I was writing part of most of this, I guess. Uh, Dennis Lehane, George Pelicanos, Richard Price, and Laura Lippman, all these writers who write um, Boston and Baltimore and Washington, D.C. Um, and I, I, but they're more than crime novels. Dennis Lehane's Mystic River is about three young boys, they're friends, and they're in Boston, and a car pulls up. One of the boys gets in the car with two men, and it drives away, and two boys don't. The men molest the boy, and his life is changed. He's, he, he survives, but all three of their lives are changed by these events, and it takes place when they're adults, for the most part. And it's much more about the psychology mm -hmm. and the Boston landscape than it is about any, you know, any murder that happens. Um, so I, I was interested in that. I was interested in mortal danger. You know, a lot of books, uh -huh. you know, characters aren't really at risk. So, you know, I think I wanted there to be some high stakes in the book. Also, the book, you know, has, you know, I have to trust my instincts. And this idea of a rural police officer was nagging at me, the way the, the mechanic was. Mm -hmm. I was hearing from both of these, so that needed to be the character. And if you're a police officer, you know, their job is to deal with crime. So crime had to play a part of it. Um, but I didn't want it just to be about crimes. So the two crimes take place off stage. It's not about the girls who are missing or murdered. It's about Larry and, Lys, Larry and Salas' relationship. Mm. So in a way, the crimes are ancillary to the novel. Mm. They drive it, but it's much more about how Larry and Silas finally find each other again than it is about finding the killer. That's part of it. And I'll tell you a funny story that, that you may ha find hard to believe. I had written almost the whole book before I realized, oh my God, I've got to have a killer. <laughs> I did not have anyone who had killed anyone. And I even considered, excuse me, for a while, having Larry be the murderer. You know, in a psycho, psycho-like way, where he's had a split personality, mm -hmm. and wouldn't that have been terrible? You know, that's been done a lot. Mm -hmm. For a while, I thought maybe Silas did it, but I knew that he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. then, then I wrote, uh, you know, in, in, you know, in Brazil, in my last month, panicking, I've got to have a killer. What am I going to do? I, I wrote about the mill foreman, and I said I, I had him. Uh, his wife had cancer, in this, in, in this avenue I wrote. And uh, he, he got her medical marijuana, and he, got, he started smoking it himself after she died. He got on worse and worse drugs. And he, in, in trying to get his drugs, he went to the drug dealer and killed him and, and, be, and just became a very low human. That didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Then I remembered an old, old draft of a story that, fa that had failed about a kid who was fascinated by the town weirdo who may have done something a long time ago. And this kid goes, you know, it was the kid's point of view, you know, uh, he goes to this man and tries to befriend a man who may have done terrible things. And I thought, oh my God, the man is Larry. The kid is my killer. Mm -hmm. Whoever he turned, you know, I didn't know he was Wallace then. Mm -hmm. And I knew a guy named Lamar Stringfellow. Mm -hmm. And I love this name. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where, I think Wallace may have come from George Wallace, a terrible Alabama governor mm -hmm. and racist. Um, so maybe I, that's where the first name came from. But suddenly, in about two days, I wrote all of Larry and Silas's scenes where they, where they talked to each other. And, you know, it gave Larry a chance to talk. You know, um, something about the novel um, that's interesting to me is that the point of view shifts. It begins with yeah. Larry and then yeah. Silas and Larry and mm -hmm. Silas. Um, Larry shot in the first chapter at the end of it. And then what am I going to do with Larry, you know, for his, his point chapters? Because he's lying in a bed in a coma, maybe dying. So that's when the past began to work its way in. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, you know, it seemed a good time to, to integrate the past. Southerners are obsessed with the past. Southern people in the United States, South, because we lost the Civil War, is what I think, you know. If you have a fight, if someone fights, the winner walks off triumphant, and the loser broods. Mm -hmm. I think the South is a brooding guilty place. And so, um, um, so, you know, 
the past had to matter. So that's a way to get in Larry and Silas's background mm -hmm. in those three, I think, chapters um, three, five, and seven are Larry's background. And then maybe chapter seven, maybe was when Wallace comes in. Mm -hmm. But that's also in the past. The past is catching up to Larry finally waking up. So it does, he does wake up in chapter maybe 11 or something. He has the uh, chapter, yeah. Uh, and only in the last chapter are both points of view together, yeah. which I hope is a subtle way of saying they will come together and they will, you know, maybe be, have a kind of life, have a kind of relationship, because they're all each other has, really. Mm -hmm. They're half-brothers, and that's something. Mm -hmm. Before this, Larry didn't have a half-brother, and a half-brother's better than no brother. 